Hello and welcome back to another episode of An Injustice for All MMA. My name is David, and this episode is for UFC 297, Strickland versus Duplessis. Uh, I just, I just want to note that it is 1 a.m. on a Monday, two days after UFC 297. I dodged all the spoilers. I stayed offline. I don't know. I didn't know who won. And I finished the card. I'm saying this because I'm tired. This card <laughs> might be the most draining card I think I've ever watched. For one, because I watched it in a two-day stretch. I watched it on Sunday, went to bed, went to work. Then get, right. That's not important. The important bit is this card is the most draining card I think I've watched in a long time. And it's because of just the style of which many of these fights happened. Now, the prelims started off really fast to where they they were fast. There were a lot of finishes. They were kind of entertaining. And then as the card came down to the main event, it slowly turned into... I don't want to call it boring. It, turn, it slowly turned into a... A techno fest, a, a technical fight between everybody, um, and that's what's so draining about this card. The other thing that's draining about this card is the shitty score. I mean, oh lord, have mercy! Terrible scoring tonight in all facets, and I'm not talking about the main event. We'll get to that in a second. I just recently got offline, so everyone's kind of going crazy. I feel. I, Listen, I like Sean Strickland. I just want to put that out there. I like Sean Strickland. I feel like everyone's a little biased here on the Sean Strickland thing, thinking he won. We'll get to that in a second, but I don't think he won. Um, And I personally, in particular, don't think it's actually as close as everyone's making out to see. Also, I saw that Dana had it 2-2 before the final round. He can't score, nor should he ever touch a scorecard. I've been saying Dana White cannot score cards. He can't score cards to save his life. Also, I saw the verdict app where everyone scored it for Strickland. Fans can't score either. It's it, it's wild. It, everything's all over the place. I'm shitting on everybody. But let's get back to the point, which is this card is terrible. Because let's let's start from the jump. When this fight was when this card was announced, everyone said this card is terrible. They looked at it, and they were like, on paper, this card is gross, it's terrible, it shouldn't even be a pay-per-view. And in my head, I was like, eh, you guys are being too much, blah, blah, blah. And as I was watching it, I was going, you know what? They're right. This is a fight night. This is a a fight night that was pitched as a a pay-per-view. The Mexico card... That special Mexico Vegas card, uh, Cinco de Mayo card that they had uh, last year, I think it was a Cinco de Mayo card, uh, Mexican Independence Day card. That was more pay per view quality than this, and and the fact of the matter is, let's just start off with the prelims of the prelims, right? Whatever. Allen versus Eloyev. That's like a fight night. That's like a five round fight night. Curtis Burialt, Barryu, whatever, Burial, whatever. The nature of that fight made me feel like this fight shouldn't have been on a pay-per-view. The Magni Mallet fight shouldn't have been on a pay-per-view. The Pennington Bueno Silva fight shouldn't have been on a pay-per-view. There's just so much. The Katana Armfield fight shouldn't have been on a pay-per-view. There was just so much. This so this card was so draining, and to make matters even worse, the judges. Did not help. And Bruce didn't help for one of them. But let's start from the very top. From the very, 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 very top. We're going to go... We're going to do this slightly different from now. We're just going to go in order of the card from from the prelims up. Honorable mentions mixed with injustices. Mixed with if there was a robbery or not. We'll start with the first one. Jazz Davisius versus Casueta. Okay? Um... Jazz Davisius wins in the third round via submission. Uh, I scored a 10-8 in the first and the second round. 
Okay, in the first round, Justin Vasilis had a takedown with ground about for about three plus minutes, possible 10-8. I gave her a 10-8. In the second round, uh, Jazz Davisius dropped and had ground and pound for three plus minutes against uh, Priscilla Cachueta, possible 10-8. I gave her a 10-8. It was at this moment, okay, it was at this moment in the second round where I was thinking to myself, this fight should have been stopped. This fight should have been stopped, and I was surprised I'm sorry, did I did I put submission? I think I think it was submission. Am I am I am I bugging out here? No, no, I'm not bugging out. Th- this fight should have been stopped in the second round. Now, I understand maybe the argument could be Jez Davisius' strikes weren't uh super vicious. Um Priscilla Cashway was given an opportunity to get out, but I feel like she, she was giving an opportunity to to really leave this fight and for some reason the ref let her stay in i feel like a little a little too long but um there's that we go to the judges scorecards and uh the judges went a little crazy on this one Derek cleary he his scorecard reflects mine 10 8 in the first two rounds uh kyle costello same his scorecard reflects mine and then saul diamato who is getting crap online uh Gives the first round a 10 8 for Jazz Davisius and gives the second round a 10 7. That's unnecessary. We don't, come on. That's unnecessary. Now, I could be wrong given what I just said a second ago, which is the fight could have been stopped. I think, I think that's, I think that's a reasonable point to put it 10 7. So I actually take back what I was saying here. Um, there were many moments where I felt like the ref could have stopped that fight. And it wasn't. And I think that's where the 10-7 comes in. So there there you have it. Um, quick quick note on Saul Diamato. I know we'll get to it towards the end, but I saw Annex tweet about his scorecards. I, I don't th- I think when we're arguing about a person's scorecards, we should argue about the individual scorecard. A- Annex was clumping in together. A- Annex was showing grace towards Saul Diamato. But the the issue I had with the tweet was clumping in the three decisions the strickland decision the strickland decision he gave uh for the duplessis fight the decision he gave for the kenny near fight and the one for the hermanson fight the hermanson fight was one of the worst scorecards ever i think in history so it should be separated on its own from the kenny near fight which i think most people if they rewatch that fight if they even if they watched it regularly Cannonier lost that fight and Saul Diamato scored that correctly and then in this fight he's in my opinion since we'll get to why this is so controversial he scored this one incorrectly they should just be looking at the individual scorecard instead of hey look Saul Diamato scores another bad fight now it's consistent yes but it's weird how people are using him as a uh, Oh, look, he scored it correctly when normally they'll attack him for scoring things incorrectly. But that's whatever. Let's get back to the to the thing. We go to the first honorable. We go to the first injustice of the night. The only injustice on my scorecards. OK, injustice, i.e. robbery. This had me this. This really set my night. This put my night in. This made me feel all sorts of ways. Sydney versus Tavares. I had this 29-28 for Sydney. Uh, City, excuse me. City versus Tavares. I had the uh, 29-28 for City. Last two rounds for City. Okay, first round for Tavares. Um, before I even start this fight... No, let me run down this fight and then I'll I'll complain about commentary. So, <laughs> first round, Tavares outstrikes City. Okay, pretty simple. Second round, City is dropped by Tavares. Early in the second round. Now, this happens a lot of times, and this is scored consistently the same way, where a person's dropped in the middle or early part of the of a round, but then, just like in this round, City then goes on to well outstrike Tavares. The round belongs to City. The round belongs to City. It's scored consistently this way all the time, but occasionally, if this isn't in the apex, for some weird reason, 
I guess judges just freeze up and they just decide, well, fuck it, we'll just give it to the other guy. Okay, cool. Um, again, Tavares drops City early in the second round. City goes on to outstrike him well enough to take back this round. Um, third round, City outstrikes Tavares, and that's where you have. And that's where you have this. You go to the judges' scorecards. You go to the judges' scorecards, and it's just. It's really saddening to see. Derek Cleary, his scorecard reflects mine. And then Eric Colon, he gives the first two rounds to Tavares. And that's where I'm stuck with the... Look, I'm going to give an honorable mention. I think it's an honorable mention. Terrible by Eric Colon to give the second round to Tavares because of the drop, even though he was outstruck well in this second round. He gives the first two rounds to Tavares. Last round he gives to City. Uh, Salim Hanif... Gives the first round to Tavares. He gives the second round to City. And then he gives the third round to Tavares. Terrible scorecard. It's a very bad scorecard. The last round belongs to City. Everyone knows that. This is a shit scorecard. It's worse than the Eric Colon scorecard. So honorable mention of those two. I just want to point out that throughout the entire night, and I've complained about this multiple times, okay, Dominic Cruz can't score cards to save his life. Who's the other guy? Daniel Cormier can't score cards to save his life. Even though tonight, I think he was actually he was actually well in how he was looking at some of the scorecards. The annoying thing about Dominic Cruz isn't his voice; it's the fact that he continues to waffle on about the damage. The damage. He's not understanding the damage criteria at all, to the point where Anik even has to step in. In a fight I can't remember. I think it might be the... I think it might be the Strickland and Duplessis fight. Where he says, oh, well, he cut him. So he's winning this round. And Anik... I can tell it's burning in his head of like... Dom, please shut the fuck up. He says on commentary, he says... Yeah, a cut doesn't carry over... The the damage sustained by a cut in one round doesn't bleed over haha bleed over into the next round it just doesn't and the and I'm glad someone finally said it because I'm because at that point Dominic Cruz is just waffling he's just talking for no reason he's he he shouldn't even be there every so often I go online and I see he gets crap from everybody and rightfully so but I think not for him being annoying but for, just for him talking, he just, he's he's not saying anything of, of of real substance. Him, Paul Felder, Michael Bisming, just over and over again. They're just there for no reason. Sorry, that was a little a little tan. Let me get let me get back on point. So, City got robbed, and that put my night into a into a terrible mood. And then we go to the next fight. Another split decision. Jordan versus Woodson. Um, really nice fight. 29-28 for Woodson. I had the first two rounds for Woodson, last round for Jordan. Um, in that very first round, Woodson was outstriking Jordan. Again, same thing happened in the second round. Just had a less... Uh, it, it, optically, it wasn't good. In the second round, Woodson again outstruck Jordan, but it, the optics were a little wonky to where I was so scared of what happened in the City versus Tavares fight. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And the way the commentary was talking, I was just like, oh my God, they're going to steal this away from Woodson. Little do I know, I guess I was right. Um, um, I was right in that feeling. Um, and then the third round, Jordan had a submission attempt, and he outstruck Woodson. You go to the judges' scorecards. Okay. You go to the judges' scorecards. And uh, Derek Cleary, his scorecard, Derek Cleary was on it, I guess. Derek Cleary, his scorecard reflects mine. Um, Patricia Wandermeer gives the first two rounds to Jordan. This is, this is just, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what to, to even say. This woman should be barred from ever touching a pen that writes on a score, on a score sheet. She gives the first two rounds to Jordan. I don't know what she was watching. What? Jordan 
clinching with Wood Woodson at the end of each round? Is that is that the criteria for him winning the terrible, terrible scorecard? Honorable mention. It's it's bad. It's one of the worst scorecards of the night. Um, and then Declan Woods, he gives the last two rounds to Woodson. Uh, excuse me, he gives the last two rounds to Woodson. He gives the first round to Jordan. Honorable mention there. He gives the first round to Jordan. That already is bad. He's not watching the fight at that point. He's not watching the fight. So honorable mention there. First round to Jordan, insane. Second round to Woodson, obviously. But if you're scoring it this way, it doesn't even make sense. It, it makes zero sense. In the first round, Woodson is outstriking Jordan by a wide margin. In the second round, he outstrikes him by a much lesser margin. At this rate, you at this rate you should have given Jordan the second round, but whatever. Honorable mention. He gives the last two rounds to Woodson. The last round doesn't even belong to Woodson. Honorable mention. And a shit scorecard by Patricia Wandermeer. Not or Vandermeer. Gross. Gross stuff. Um to even top this all off. Bruce Bruce Buffer at the end is reading the split decision and I almost go into a tantrum because I hear him say Charles instead he's doing the goofy announcer thing where he's saying Sean and my head in the I'm wait I'm watching the 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 awkward thing of Charles going to Charles going yes I won and then Woodson just standing there and then a DC goes over and says no you won and then I then remember that he then said Woodson. I was too stuck up that he said Sh- Charles, but he actually said Sean. It was a whole clusterfuck that just fucking ruined it again. This whole night was just, my head is spinning at this point. Um, we go to the next honorable, another honorable mention. This one's a, I'll explain why I put this in the honorable mention. This is Katona versus uh, Armfield. Um, I had the first two rounds for Armfield, last round for Katona, 29-28 for Armfield. Um, in the first round, in the first round, uh, Armfield outstruck Katona by about like 10 plus strikes. Uh, second round, Armfield outstruck Katona again. Katona had a takedown at the very end. And then the third round, Armfield barely outstruck Katona, but Katona had two takedowns. Reason why I put this in the honorable mention category, obviously. Yeah, reason why I put this in the honorable mention category before I get to the judges, because I thought they all scored it the same. They did, but it's a little wonky. Um, it's because of the optics. Even just watching it again, with the way the commentary is talking, the way the scoring has been tonight, your mind is now, your mind is now telling you what we normally see as rounds that were, if they were scored in any other jurisdiction, these are rounds for this specific. Fighter, there that that gets thrown out the window at this point. So I'm looking at the end of these rounds and Katona being goofy and deciding to actually do something at the end of the first two rounds makes me question whether or not a judge gave it to him. And thankfully, he didn't win the fight, but some judges probably did get swayed from that. And I'll and we'll go into it right now. So. Eric Colon, 29-28, his scorecard reflects mine. Kyle Costello, 29-28, for Armfield, his scorecard reflects mine. And then Saul Diamata, who just had a... He was off tonight. He was terrible tonight. I already showed one scorecard. Let's show this one. Gives the first round to Katona. I, I can bet you... I, I can't bet you. I can bet you a billion dollars... That the reason why Brad Katona is even here is because of that terrible decision that that Saul D'Amato is partly responsible for the terrible decision that he gave to Brad Katona in The Ultimate Fighter. If you watch The Ultimate Fighter, you know Brad Katona beat uh, some guy I can't remember at this point. And he should have lost that fight. They scored it for the other person. They short it for Bracatona when he shouldn't have won this fight. It's it's I'm just it, it just baffles me how bad some of these scorecards are. It really does. Because in my head I wanna say, you know, 
just have the regular judges judge it. And then I'm looking at the scorecard and I'm going, that Vander, that, that, that Vandermeer lady almost fucked it. And then on the other hand, I want to say, well, just bring in the regular Vegas judges. These guys are fucking it. So all the judges suck. All the judges suck. Let's, so let, let's read this real quick. He gives Bracketone the first round. Already insane. Gives the second round to, to Armfield. Fine. And then gives the last round to Armfield. I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm confused. The last round doesn't even go to Arm. Again, honorable mention to Saul Diamond. It's 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 ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm just I'm really lost for words. Um, Allen versus Evil Wave. That should have been a fight night. Curtis versus Barriolt. Um, I had this twenty nine twenty eight for Barriolt. I put a close marker on the first round. The first round was too close. I couldn't definitively put my stamp of approval on it. Um, this was a split decision win for Curtis, obviously, but I had a 29-20 for Barrio. I give the first run and the last run for Barrio. The second round goes to Curtis. Um, in that very first round, Barrio barely outstrikes Curtis by about one to two strikes. I put a close marker on it. I can't count on I can't definitively count on that. Um, second round, Curtis outstruck uh, Barrio. There, there were... Burial was outstriking him in the round, and then towards the end, Curtis is putting it on him and kind of outstrikes him towards the end. Um, and then the third round, Bar- here's what's weird about this third round thing. Burial is outstriking Curtis in the first half of this round. He's outstriking him well in the first half of this round. And then, magically, on the flip of a dime, they both start to hit each other at the- each other at the same exact time landing strikes equally on each other in the clinch just punching each other i don't know how you definitively sit there as a judge and go okay burial's winning and then they're both hitting each other so curtis wins no i'm i'm lost on how you can score that third round for curtis at all at all it it, it makes no sense it makes no sense but we go to the judges scorecards okay and this is what had me in a bind. When I heard 30-27, I knew it was done. I knew it was done. But it it hurts because in no way is this a 30-20. 29-28, Curtis, I can sit with. 30-27 is just bad judging. Declan Woods gives a 30-27 to uh, Chris Curtis. Honorable mention. Trash scorecard. Throw it in the trash. Derek Cleary, he gives, uh, he gives a 29-28. That's why His sc- honorable mention to Derek Lee. His scorecard's fucked too. He gives the first round to Curtis, which is fine. It's a close round. You can argue that. Second round he gives to Burial. Nonsense. Burial loses the second round. Already trash scorecard. He gives the third and final round to Burial. That's fine. Honorable mention to Derek. Clearly, I I I personally had Burial winning, so I'm not mad with the decision that he gave, but it's a bad scorecard. And then Eric Colon has a 30-27 for Curtis. It's shit. It's a shit scorecard. And it it is what it is. So just 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 absolute nonsense. Um next honorable mention, Magni comes back. He has a he wins by TKO. Magni versus Mallet. A TKO in the third round. Basically, Mallet just runs out of cardio. He has no car he, he gets out cardio. Let me even say that properly. He gets out cardio by Magni. He's he's winning the first round. He's winning the second round. Okay, um, he he outstrikes Magni in the first round. He gets two takedowns with ground and pound in the second round, and then the third round, he gets taken down. He gets taken down, I believe, and then he gets taken down, and uh, he gets pounded out. Another fight where I thought thirty seconds too late on the stoppage, but we. I digress. Um, Was there anything I wanted to say more about the burial thing? No, just just the scoring is so weird that it just had me on stilts. Um, next one, the co-main. I guess this one wrong. I thought Bueno Silva was going to win. I was wrong entirely. Um, Pennington versus Bueno Silva. I had this 49-46 for Pennington. Okay, 
Uh, first round for Buena Silva, the rest of the rounds for, for Pennington. Pretty, pretty fucking simple. Um, in that first round, Buena Silva had two takedowns, and she outstruck uh, Pennington on the feet. Second round, Pennington outstruck uh, Buena Silva, and Buena Silva had, had a takedown, but it didn't matter. But uh, Pennington was outstriking her well on the feet. Um, well, in general, really. Third round, Pennington had a ta- Pennington had two takedowns with some ground bound and outstruck uh, Buena Silva on the feet. Fourth round, Buena Silva had a takedown, didn't matter. Uh, Pen- Pennington, um, she had a reversal with ground bound and she outstruck uh, Buena Silva. And then in the fifth round, uh, Pennington had a takedown with ground bound for like three plus minutes. You can argue a ten eight here. I gave it ten nine, but you can. Ar- I wouldn't be mad at a ten eight here. You go to the judges' scorecards. Um, Eric Cologne, his scorecard reflects mine, 49-46. Uh, Saudi Amato, 49-46, his scorecard reflects mine. And then Salim Hanif, um, his scorecard reflects mine, minus the 10A he gives in the fifth round for Pennington. So there's that. You go to the most controversial one of the night, because no one will care about the city one, even though it's a pure robbery. It's a pure robbery on the city fight. Strickland versus Duplessis. Now, I was I scored it. <clears throat> then I looked online for everyone what was going on because it's two days later, and it turns out everyone's just having a war. Everyone's arguing about jabs. Everyone's arguing about this. Everyone's arguing about that. It's almost as though nobody was watching this correctly. Let's start off with the first round. Let's start off with the theme of this fight, really, which is both fighters are slipping punches. There's a goofy narrative that. Okay, half the strikes Duplessis through. They're acting as though Duplessis is Emmett when he was fighting Calvin Cater. No, 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 no. That's that's not the situation. That's not the situation at all. And I just want to preface this by saying I like Sean Strickland. I like Duplessis too, but I like Sean Strickland. Duplessis is throwing with power and volume, but it's not in the Emmett Calvin Cater sort of way. He's 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 landing a lot of his shots. Now, in particular to just the first round, all right? In particular to just the first round, he's getting outstruck, right? Sean is outstriking him, jab, cross, whatever. He's outstriking him pretty well. Duplessis goes for a takedown near the end of the round, gets it. Strickland gets back up pretty immediately. So and so that's the takedown is irrelevant, but he gets a takedown. 10-9 for Strickland in the first round. Here's where all the stupid it, it, I'm, it I I'm I'm watching this fight and then I again I finished it and I'm looking online. Everyone's having an argument on which rounds are what? On um, which rounds is the, are the rounds that they're talking about? Let's start off with round two. It's it's close on the feet, but Duplessis is slightly edgy. And forget about the actual numbers that they showed on the screen. Duplessis is actually outstriking Strickland by a little bit. And then he gets a takedown in this round, accompanied with the fact that he gets a takedown. He's outstriking Strickland in this round. He wins round two. I don't know how this is like a, a controversial take. I don't know how everyone's going, yeah, I had round two for Strickland. No, you shouldn't have round two for Strickland. And if you did, you're not watching. You're not watching at all. People are saying round two. But the main, A lot of people are saying round two for Strickland. Then there's a small minority opinion of round three for Strickland. Before I get to round three for, that people are saying... Round two, again, it's kind of close on the feet. Forget about the takedown. Duplessis is slowly outstriking Strickland in this round and then gets the takedown. Round three, small minority of people. Duplessis just outstrikes Strickland straight up. He straight up outstrikes Strickland. It's not even It's not even close. to Like, the strikes are close, but he outstrikes him. It's, not, it's simple. I don't I don't see a round in here that's close that you could that is like a toss up. And I know again everyone's talking about the jabs and the slips. They're both slipping. They're both slipping shots. They're both hitting each other's elbows. 
They're both hitting, hitting each other's shoulders. And, and by the way, everyone's talking about Strickland's jabs. Yes, a lot of them were going through. Not all of them. A lot of them were hitting the elbow of Duplessis. A lot of them were hitting the forearm of Duplessis. Is that a legitimate strike? Are we counting those? Is every pumped jab a legitimate strike? If that's the case, then Strickland wins fucking every single round on here. And we don't. And we can just forget this. But that's the third round. Fourth round, close on strikes. That's actually even on strikes. They're kind of trading back and forth. They're kind of even. They're kind of, yeah, like I said, they're just trading back and forth. But then this round is definitively Duplessis, given that Duplessis gets one takedown. Right, Strickland gets up, gets another takedown. He kind of stays there a little long, gets a third takedown. Um, I forgot if it's a suplex or a belly to back or whatever the fuck. He gets three takedowns in this round. At this point, in my head, I'm like, oh, shit, Strickland's, Strickland's down 3-1. Um, but, again, the judging has been so wonky that you just, uh, you, you, you just, you're just, you're hoping and praying for the correct scorecards. Fifth round. Strictly, they they start to they do like a a much better uh, a much better uh, imitation of Usman versus Chamayev round three. They do that in round five, and Strickland just outstrikes Duplessis pretty clearly, and that's where you get the scorecards: forty eight, forty seven, Duplessis. First round for Strickland, last round for Strickland. Two, three, and four go to Duplessis. This was a split decision. We go to the judges' scorecards. Uh, Derek Cleary, his scorecard reflects mine. Eric Cologne, scorecard reflects mine. These are the correct scorecards. They're the correct scorecards. And then Saudi Amato, terrible scorecard. I don't know. It's just a really, really bad scorecard. He gives the first round to Strickland. He gives the second round to Duplessis. Gives the third round to Strickland. That's absolute nonsense. Honorable mention, that's absolute nonsense. He was the fourth round to Duplessis. That's clear. So he has it 2-2. In no way should this be 2-2. I understand people had it 2-2. People had it 3-1. It shouldn't be 2-2. And then he gives the last round to Strickland. It's just bad. It's bad scoring. It's bad scoring. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This, this card had me drained. I don't. I, I can't wait for I can't wait for in two weeks when I can watch again on a Saturday. But I'm just I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I need to go to bed. Thank you all for listening, and God bless.